So Dr. Hart, actually, let me do a short introduction to you, to the audience, and then I will hand over to you, okay. So Dr. Hart is uh, the CEO of Applied Knowledge Science Company. He started his company 25 years ago. And then he also uh, have done this uh, knowledge transfers, uh, knowledge management, uh, and so on. So over um, so many years. He has also served a lot of very big organizations in the world, like uh, the Pan American, American Health Organization, Abdul Bay Police Headquarters, Western Region Development Council, the General Secretary Executive Council, the located Martin Company, the US Air Force, the US Army Research Laboratories, Wells Tower Watson, World Trade Center, Dulles Airport, and so on. He served so many big organizations around the world. You know, for the big organization, the more complex of the technology transfers. So on top of that, he also wrote a lot of books about knowledge like uh, deep learning menus, the knowledge exploring, uh, ex uh, explorer guide to self-discovery in education, work and life. Build the enterprise in, of the future, co-create and uh, deliver extraordinary value in ed meaning mind world. And he also, he also wrote the book about, about the future of the future, which were uh, the articles, uh, serious articles uh, being published by the Knowledge Management World magazines. He's a very good uh, uh, writer. I mean, the, the, he, he likes to write a lot of articles uh, to share with uh, all his insight uh, to the audience, uh, to, the, to the public. His very generosity to the public and the help of the people, especially the young people. Okay, and today we would like to, we would like to hear Dr. Art to share us the soft skills needed for tacit knowledge capturing and transfer. That's something we are going to hear. Thank you, Dr. Art. Now, let's welcome Dr. Art. Thank you. And I will tell you a little secret. Um, as I share my screen here, just a minute. Yeah. Um, yeah. My uh, my knowledge of uh, Mandarin Chinese comes from the Google later, <laughs> Google Translate. Wow. So what I like wow. to do is I like to I like to just learn a few words in every language. So because I believe language is what brings the world together, and if we have tools like the Google later, <laughs> Google Translator. Um, then we should use these tools, even if it's just for a little bit, just to say something like Xi Xi Ni or Zhao Sheng Hao, <laughs> just a few <laughs> words, I think it thank could you. go a long you, way in bringing yeah, our world you. together. So that is, uh, that is another matter. But let's, let's talk about uh, critical soft skills. Thank you, Fisher, for your wonderful introduction. And thank you to all of the sponsors, especially, and delegates of this major event. Um, it is a, is a very great honor for me to, to be invited to speak here, and I'm so glad and so delighted that uh, we are putting on this event. So thank you to all the sponsors and delegates and everyone in attendance. Now, I've given you all the background of all our customers and uh, areas of specialty. Uh, here are our sites. You are all of them in your uh, handouts, so I won't go into them now. Let's get into what we're going to talk about here. Uh, so in, in this presentation, first of all, just touch upon the importance of tacit knowledge management. But the emphasis is that the thing that we need to be looking at, as you know, the world is becoming more and more automated. AI, artificial intelligence, machine learning, robotic process automation. All of these things uh, are impacting 
our tacit knowledge management in two ways. The people who build this automation, their tacit knowledge becomes part of that automation, but it is not documented, very rarely documented. So this is something we need to be very much aware of. Increasing automation is making our job of tacit knowledge management even more difficult. So that's a very important point I want to emphasize here. Then, of course, the main topic here is the importance of soft skills, not hard skills, but all the soft skills needed to draw and capture and transfer tacit knowledge. And we have give, put these soft skills into three categories, which we will cover. General, directly related soft skills, and what we call supportive soft skills. And then we will wrap up, of course, we say, all right, what do I do next? Uh, I will give you hopefully a few steps that you can take away from this presentation and begin to put to work in your organization. So how does that sound? Ready to go? Okay. So first of all, the importance of tacit knowledge, as I say, in a world of automation. So we have now what we'll call here a box. Very often, we have so much of our organization's knowledge is now in the form of analytic, AI self-programming, learning models and algorithms, machine learning, decision processes, decision aids and tools. Knowledge is hiding in all of this now. So that's a very important thing to consider. And what also makes this more important and where tacit knowledge plays a major role is are the right inputs going into these machines, into all of this automation? Are the right data even being input, right? And on the output side, same question. Are they giving us the right answers, the answers we are looking for? What is going in? What is happening inside this box? And very often we don't know what's happening. Or as I say, organizations will hire data scientists, right? Data science is a big uh, demand, right? In, in, in very large demand. So people hire data scientists and what? All that data science knowledge is in their head. And then they put it into the analytics, put it into the algorithms, but it's not documented. So when that person leaves, that data scientist leaves and the algorithms are still there, the next person comes along and says, where did this come from? <laughs> and there is no answer. So that is a problem, you see. Then we also go, even if we do answer all of these questions, now we have to make sure, are we applying those outputs to the correct decisions? Do we even know what decisions are being impacted? And one more step, and this is the very important one, and this is where tacit knowledge really plays a role, is are you aware of the possible downstream consequences? So you may have a decision here that impacts something that's happening right now. But as you know, so many decisions don't show themselves or don't create problems or the problems are not revealed until way down, later on, down sometime in the future. So all of these things are important. And if we do not have a good understanding of each of these steps, we are exposed to risks, liabilities, upside and downside risks. And on the, it's not just all risk, it could be missed opportunities. So I hope this uh, points out the importance of tacit knowledge, but now even more important in, in machines. So I have a question here for everyone to think about. And I ask this question often, where is your critical tacit knowledge hiding? Where is it? Is it in human agents, in your people? 
and tacit knowledge as we know, much of it is in our key subject matter experts. But there's also group knowledge, right? Teams collectively can have this tacit knowledge. But as I said, the new, the new aspect and whole thing that's changing is tacit knowledge is in automated agents, in automation, in algorithms, data, documents, mountains of data and documents and algorithms. Now, I ask people to say, all right, give, tell me what percent, what percent of your critical tacit knowledge is in people and what percent is in the machines or the computers or the algorithms? And almost all organizations cannot give me this number, right? They do not know. So this is something very important to think about. It is both. So while we may be focusing on capturing tacit knowledge from people, there's a lot of tacit knowledge buried in our systems. Okay, so as more of our critical knowledge becomes hidden deep inside machines, what is more important now? Human capacity for sense making. Because only the, the AI, artificial intelligence and algorithms can all do all this, all of this computation. But still, only people, only humans, only subject matter experts can make sense. We call that sense making. Make sense of what's coming out of the computer. We need both. We need the humans to teach computers and then computers to show us what the output is and does it make sense. Okay, I hope that makes sense. <laughs> All right, so uh, soft skills then is our main topic here. And you know, by soft skills, we mean it, we, we talk about engineering, science, technology. Those are all hard technical skills. But soft skills, we will show you what they are. But 77% 70 per, of businesses agree that soft skills are as important, equally important as hard skills. So, okay, okay. It's very, very important. But does the workforce reflect that? Does the workforce have equal importance to soft skills and hard technical skills? No. Three, in four, um, three out of four employers, almost the same, 75% of employers say they have a hard time finding graduates with the soft skills they need. So there is a huge shortage of graduates who have the necessary soft skills. So this is a big problem, especially if we want to focus on tacit knowledge, it's going to require training in soft skills and graduates who are graduating, not just with technical skills, but with soft skills as well. And now let's, let's talk about what those soft skills are. Um, it's deeply personal, as you know, because that's what tacit knowledge is. All right, I'll go through these a little bit quickly. This in knowledge management has been on tools, methods, technologies, right? Always the tools, technologies, platforms, all these things. That's where most of the emphasis in knowledge management has been. And even our education system. We used to spend a lot of time, especially in the West, uh, with liberal arts, communication skills, writing, reading, all of these things, philosophy, language skills. Um, that has all gone away pretty much. That is very small emphasis. It is all S-T-E-M, right? Science, technology, engineering, mathematics. That has been the thrust. And I think that is causing problems. Soft skills tend to be an afterthought, right? In other words, these graduate students in engineering, they are hired and then they have to learn these soft skills very quickly, uh, maybe through something like Toastmasters. I don't know, is, uh, or any of you 
familiar with Toastmasters or maybe Dale Carnegie. Uh, they take these courses on the side and they are not part of their main skill set. So many soft skills cannot be even taught. They have to be learned. So let's talk about why it's so, why this is so important. I call these the four hops, all right? You have a knowledge source, an expert who has tacit knowledge in their head, and you have the knowledge recipient, someone looking. We want to transfer the tacit knowledge from this expert to this new person or, or an intermediate person. And this tends to be one, an older generation. This person here tends to be younger generation. So they're diff they obviously have different mental models to start with. The older generation has a different cultural background, different educational background, different uh, learning modalities. And uh, this person on the right, the knowledge recipient, has different mental models. We have to cross that. So the first hop is what we call knowledge capture. And we interview, we do protocol analysis, right? And we have some representation, some ways to draw that, start drawing that tacit knowledge out, maybe drawing, flow charts, checklists, videos, storytelling, those sorts of things. That's hop number one, first hop. Then we have to go to codification, right? And now we move from human, we're getting more into the machine. And now we start doing models, algorithms, logic, diagrams, knowledge graphs, knowledge maps, and even plain narrative that is all stored in the machine. But then there's another hop. We've got to bring that knowledge out of the stored area in the machine and bring it on screen so that hop number four the recipient can interact with that knowledge that's in the machine through some sort of interface. So you see one, two, three, four hops to get from one mental model to another. And anywhere along here, you can begin to have misunderstandings, miscommunication, and mistakes and errors can occur. So this is why we have to be very, very careful. And it's very important to watch out for all of these steps. All right, now, so let's talk about, I said there were different kinds of soft skills. I will go through them quickly uh, because I know you are coming up on a break and I want, don't want to uh, cut into your break time <laughs> because it has been a long, more, a long uh, eve morning for you. Um, so I'll just give you some of these soft skills in general ability to explain principles and truths, ability to recognize and suppress different types of bias. And I'm not talking about bias like they usually talk about gender bias or racial bias, ethnic bias. No, um, I'm talking cognitive bias, like the confirmation bias, recency bias. So People, even subject matter experts, things that have happened more recently, they may pay more attention to and forget or pay less attention to things that worked in the past, even if those things that happened in the past are more important, right? So that's a bias. Uh, how they frame a problem, the availability of knowledge. If something is, is easily available, that may receive greater weight or greater importance than something that's more difficult to obtain, but that should not be the case, right? That is a bias that should be corrected because just because it's hard to obtain that information, that may be the information we want. And overconfidence is an important one. Experts tend to be tend to think that they are the big expert and they know all things. <laughs> but as you know, even the experts can be wrong. So it's important to recognize and work with the experts in identifying and correcting all the different types of bias. That's an important one. 
Um, we will work together, and I think uh, other speakers have talked about the mentoring and working together and trust, so I won't go into that too much. The ability to capture content, context, and intent, all of those, so it's not just the task, our, our um, explicit knowledge tends to be high in content, but as we're drawing knowledge out of the experts, we want to make sure we capture all of the context. What was the situation regarding this experience that they are sharing with us? We need to make sure we capture and codify that, and with what intention, for what purpose, okay? Um, very good. This is a very interesting soft skill. What are the hidden connections interdependencies in hidden relationships how are the as we say connecting the dots right connecting the dots how are how is everything that they are talking about connected and where are the dependencies and interdependencies that's that takes a special skill and evidence again very often we capture tacit knowledge from an expert and we say, okay, this expert said this. Okay, we go with, we believe him. Ah, a skilled tacit knowledge manager would say, very good expert, thank you. Show me the evidence, all right? So a good skill is understanding and respecting evidence to back up the tacit knowledge, all right? Situational learning is important. And of course, time management. The experts, the, especially the top experts, don't have a lot of time. <laughs> they are, they, because they are expert, because they are important people, they are very, very busy. So a skill is time management, to use that person's time very efficiently and effectively. Recognizing patterns is important. Ability to deep think not just what you see on the surface but to be able to drill down deep thinking drilling down systems thinking symbiotic thinking again how everything is connected and there's an ability to make the complex simple because tacit knowledge is rooted in complexity it's built upon decades of experience and how do you make that simple simplified enough so that that other person the knowledge seeker the knowledge recipient can understand it so those are the general skills now quickly directly related skills understanding psychology and behaviors obviously again an older person will have one way of behaving the young person receiving the knowledge has a different way of behaving, different habits, different behaviors. We need to understand that. That is an important soft skill. Recognizing those different mental models and reconciling them and connecting them. How different people learn and teach in different ways across different cultures, different generations. Getting people with diverse life experiences to cooperate and work together. The ability to ask questions is an important soft skill. Asking the right questions, framing the questions in the right way, and just engaging in dialogue, understanding conversation. I, yeah, yesterday, John Hovell, one of the early speakers, his specialty is conversation. He talked about that. Conversation is very important in tacit knowledge, capture and transfer, right? And so, uh, and the ability then to take this and, and now put it into writing, communication, orally, visually in writing, so that it, the tacit knowledge can now slowly become explicit knowledge. And then one more set, the supportive skills. Organize, now that we are beginning, in those different hops, remember, hop three and hop four now, we're beginning to codify the tacit knowledge. How do we organize it, put it into categories, right? Because we can have 
a large amount of data and information, but we've got to know how to organize and categorize. A librarian is good at this. So that's an important soft skill. Uh, connecting the dots, I mentioned that already, but putting everything together into an integrated whole. Applying imagery and visualization, knowledge maps and knowledge graphs are becoming very popular in this regard. So the, one of the skills is knowing how to use visualization, because visualization is very important. And, and identifying and extrapolating trends, right? So something may be happening yesterday, today, where will it be tomorrow? That's another soft skill. So I've given you many, many, many soft skills in three different categories. Uh, the, the mess, my message here is uh, these are often neglected. We need to develop, do a better job of developing these soft skills. So what, so what steps to take? All right. So this is the last slide. Find a cure for SSDD. <laughs> Soft skills deficit disorder. That is my word for that. And we do. We have a deficit or a shortage of soft skills. So let's correct it. Number one, make tacit knowledge transfer mentoring formalized in your organization. And of course, uh, mentoring.co.co is a main sponsor, right? So you know mentoring. And every person should be a mentor to somebody, and every person should be mentored by somebody. So that's number one. And I think you know that. Mentoring is a very good place to start. And by mentoring, you then begin to develop and learn and develop and, and refine these soft skills. Number two, Make sure you understand strengths and weaknesses. And remember, I talked about psychology and behaviors. So find out what person's strengths are on both the expert side and the recipient side, the expert side and the learner side, right? And match them, match the mentors and mentees. It's because you know, if you get a mentor and a mentee with two different personal, totally different personalities and totally different worldviews, it's not going to work. So there are tools here. I have a little visual here that there are tools, you know, you know the, and I believe the previous speaker, uh, yeah, Cliff Motto mentioned uh, Myers-Briggs and these things. So you can use these tools to better match mentors and mentees. And last one, review your employee development and make sure that you don't have soft skills deficit, right? Focus on developing and strengthening soft skills aimed at tacit knowledge transfer. And then make sure now we give a balance. You need the hard technical skills, but now work on a balance. And I have here the scales. There should be equal balance between hard technical skills and soft skills. So that concludes my presentation. Uh, for your kind attention. And I turn it back over to you now, uh, Fisher. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Professor uh, Dr. Art, for your wonderful sharing about this wine. Uh, I really like your word for SSDD. <laughs> I think uh, this, this, I mean, are the, the common issues many people has this kind of uh, SSDDs. Many people, I think they have it. Many organizations, they have it. So I think by doing this kind of uh, tacit knowledge management forum, and uh, also together with a lot of this uh, ongoing webinars, plus our GoTCAP, there's uh, a lot of other initiatives. We will try to, to help the people out of their SSDD, okay? I think you, you can very good one. Thank you for that. Okay. It's a uh, uh, really learning a lot also. 